Hey guys, uh, this is a video to basically just show you what I'm doing to illustrate stuff for our field guide. Um, this is going to be a very long video and I'm not going to spend any time editing it so if this is something you want to learn about please watch the video um, and you know practice it on your own download these programs and give it a try. Uh, so this is the measure that I've been working on. Um, it's uh, air sealing basement wall or crawl walls and this is basically the goal. Like, uh, So this one says remove existing insulation and so what I've done is I've actually drawn an illustration of what that would look like. So at the end of the video we should have another image that looks kind of like this for one of these next steps. Um, the image I'll show you as I go along but I, I basically drew this uh, foundation and the floor and the insulation all of that was in SketchUp and then I drew these hands using Inkscape and then I imported them into SketchUp and uh, anyway so I'll show you how I do all that stuff uh, so it'll help you out. So to get started I want to just I'm just going down the list and I wanted to pick one of these items uh, that I need to draw a picture of and you can just see how I do it. So um, <clears throat> I was thinking about this one, caulking gap around window in masonry foundation. So it's air seal around windows, we need a seal gap in the window and basement using acrylic or silicone caulk. So basically I just want to draw a picture of a concrete foundation with a window inside of it and then uh, probably have a hand in the image uh, using a caulking gun and and then probably like put something on there that looks like some caulking so that'll be the goal see if we can do it so to get started I'm just gonna open up SketchUp uh, if you I think if you try to download a copy of SketchUp now you will have to start paying for it um, I've heard that you can find older versions on the web. Uh, I sent out a video a while ago from a guy named Tom. I can't remember, but it was basically it was a, a video about how to use Google SketchUp to do to uh, kind of do a site sketch for your energy audits. And in that video, I know he explained or had a reference to where you can go and find, uh, you can still find a free version. So check out his video. I think it may have just been in his YouTube video notes. I'm not going to take the time to find it right now. But if you don't have it, there, I think you can still find a free version out there. But anyway, so um, I'm going to click to get started. And this is what SketchUp looks like when it opens up. And <clears throat> Um, when you first get into it, you may want to, you know, set up your tools. Uh, I think by default it just has this. You may want to open up a window or a toolbox to kind of lay things out. But uh, this is a tool that I use a lot. I like to um, click on this to kind of situate myself where I am in the drawing. Uh, and then I also use Orbit a ton. So. I will try to, as I'm going through this video, try to tell you what tool I'm using, where I'm clicking, why I'm clicking, things like that. Um, but uh, anyway, so to get started, the first thing I would do is I would I would kind of set up a SketchUp file that would allow me to to do lots of different things. Uh, it would allow me to take lots of different pictures or lots of different images, and I, I've already drawn this to a certain extent, but I'm going to just do it again quickly so you guys can see what I did and why I did it. Um, so I need a, a foundation, right? And I don't need the whole foundation. I really just need like one wall so that I can do this. So I'm just going to start by taking this uh, square tool and I've kind of rotated so that I'm you can see that I'm, I'm going to draw, I want to draw something on the ground, kind of flat. 
So I'm going to kind of rotate up so that I'm looking at the ground. And I'm just going to draw, and I like to start drawing my footing. This is not that important. You may never see it in the image, but I like to do it because it helps me just to picture what's actually there. So I'm just kind of dr dragging this out and dropping it um, to give me a general shape. And then, so I've I've pushed my right mouse button down. Sorry, not my right mouse button, my left mouse button down. And I'm dragging it. And then wherever I want this other corner to be, now I'm going to let go of that left mouse button. And it has created a square. Now if you'll look down here, it has the dimensions. And these dimensions may be somewhere else on your screen. I think you could move them around. They may or may not be there. If they're not there, you'll have to go to the window and turn them on. But but down in the dimensions, uh, now that I've let go of this, before I click anywhere, before I type anything else, if I want to start typing, it will, if you'll watch down here, it will just change the dimensions. So I want a footing that's going to be 20 inches wide and 20 feet long. So I'm just going to type in, and, and here's the thing, like you have to look at this and go, okay, which of those numbers do I type first? Do I type the 20 feet or the 20 inches? Well, based on the way we drew this, it looks like the, the, the distance here was the first number because that looks more like 39 feet to me. And then this, this distance from here to here is probably the 10 feet. So again, I haven't clicked anything. If I start clicking anything uh, after I've drawn that box, then I lose my opportunity to change it. So I'm going to start typing, and I'm just going to go 20, and then the apostrophe for feet, and then comma, and then 20, and the uh, quotations for inch. And then I'm going to hit Enter. And it resized that, so now I have a box that is 20 feet long and 20 inches wide. And if you ever want to, so now I'm going to zoom in on it. And in order to do that, now that I've got something else on here, I'm going to delete this guy because I don't need him, don't really care that he's there. And then I'm going to click on Zoom Extents, and that just brings me kind of up closer to my image. Now, this is a footing, and it's going to have some thickness to it and so the first thing I like to do is I use my push pull tool and I go down here and if you just hover over that top surface it will make all those dots show up and basically that's letting you know that's a surface you could push or pull so now that I'm on top of that I'm going to left click and hold and I'm gonna pull up and let go and same thing, you'll notice that we just pulled it up a distance of one foot and three quarters of an inch. Before I type anything else, I want to change that to 10 inches. So I'm just going to go 10, and then the quotes, and then hit enter, and it, it adjusted it back down to 10 inches. So now I have, this is my orbit tool, and I'm going to orbit around just by clicking and dragging. But now I have this, this chunk of, this will be my footing, so... Uh, but it, it's ultimately going to be concrete, um, and it's it's a nice box, right? 10 feet tall, 20 inches wide, 20 feet long. Now, the next thing you need to do is um, you need to group this. Uh, now, grouping is a, a key to drawing in SketchUp because uh, if you don't group this and you start drawing something else, then it attaches the next thing to the surface of this thing and if you ever want to change it or break it apart it starts thinking this is one one big giant thing made out of all the same material and it causes all kinds of problems so make sure that you're grouping it so to group it I'm gonna click on my select arrow and I'm gonna hover down here and I basically have to select this whole thing so I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna go up to here so I'm gonna click left click and hold and drag this box around whatever I'm trying to select. So I'm going to get all the way up to here, and then I'm going to let go of the mouse, and it, it's selected everything that's in that area. And then I'm going to come over here uh, and right-click. Now if I if I right-click away from it, it will deselect it. So you got to make sure your mouse is actually on top of the thing that you've selected and right-click. And then you're going to go down to make a group and now it's made that thing a group. Now, next time I select that, it'll select the whole thing. You can see everything is being selected. Uh, 
and and then what I like to do is I would like to go to my materials so over here in your default tray you should have a bunch of stuff and it typically is going to be kind of collapsed like this so expand the materials by clicking right here and you should have a few different options here uh, but if you'll click that drop down menu there may just be colors so you might just have this um, but if you'll scroll around and find something so I want to do something to make this look like concrete so I'm gonna to go to the asphalt and concrete and there's a couple of options in here and I'm gonna just pick uh, that says blacktop this is polished new concrete polished concrete old so I'm just gonna click on polished old and the second I clicked on it it turned into a paint bucket and you'll notice when I come out in here it'll be a paint bucket now since I already grouped this I should be able to just hover over it anywhere and click one time and it will paint the entire thing all six surfaces of it it'll paint it like concrete now if if you want a different uh, color maybe um, that's not dark enough or whatever so you could switch I'm gonna go concrete aggregate and and then I'm gonna hover over here and click and just see what that looks like and I'm actually liking that one better for what I'm doing I want this drawing that I'm gonna do to have nice nice contrasting uh -huh. colors and stuff so uh, I don't want things to be too dark but I you know if everything's really light shades then we may not be able to see what we're doing very well so anyway so now I have a footing and it's all colored uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to I'm gonna expand my layers and also your layers may be it may be down lower in this list of things so you might have this list that's all like this and layers might be down toward the bottom you can actually click on this and drag it and move it around see how layers drop down there I like to put my layers right at the very top and I'm going to expand it and you'll see that so this is layer 0 and it has this circle is shaded in that means we've been drawing on layer 0 I want to move this to a different layer and then I'm gonna start drawing on layer 0 again that way I've grouped this and moved it to a separate layer I can make that layer visible or invisible I could lock that layer if I want um, but uh, basically now that I've drawn this one building component I want to kind of lock it or stop drawing on the layer that it's on so I'm gonna move it to a new layer so I'm gonna go over here to layers I'm gonna hit plus and it just creates a new layer and I'm just gonna type in footing uh, and then I'm gonna uh, click on oh you've got to expand your entity info so I'm gonna click on that and you'll see that I haven't nothing selected I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna I'm gonna grab my arrow or my pointer so that I can select this and as soon as I select it you'll see that the entity info or the information about this entity comes up and it says that it's currently assigned to layer 0 well I want to move it so I'm gonna click this drop down and I'm gonna select footing and now I have moved it to the footing layer now if I want to I can check the uncheck this box saying that it's visible and now the thing disappears so I'm gonna make it reappear but my active layer is still the one with the dark circle if I wanted to keep drawing on the footing layer I could so I could do that um, but typically I like to leave my my active layer at zero and then I like to draw one building component at a time and then move it to the layer that I want it on so let's do that so the next thing I want to do is I want to draw a I need a, a foundation wall sitting on this footing so I'm gonna zoom around a little bit to wherever you know feels good to me and I actually I want to draw my foundation wall coming right up the middle of this and my foundation wall is going to be eight inches thick so I'm gonna grab my tape measure and I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna hover on this edge and you'll notice that when you get close to the edge it's gonna to snap to that edge the tape measure thinks you're probably gonna to want to pull off that edge so I'm gonna pull off that edge and you just click just click and let go and then you can kinda of pull whatever direction you're trying to measure and you'll notice that it's uh, if you're on the horizontal plane it's either gonna be green 
it'll kind of snap to these 90 degree angles. It'll be green or it could be red if you're going in this other direction. But if you're trying to go up or down, it's going to end up being blue. And so you can kind of watch and see, you know, make sure you're pulling it the right direction. And anyway, I'm going to pull it across the, the top edge of that. And then I want to get this right in the middle and it wherever you have another line. So I'm going to actually going to hover over this line because this will snap to the midpoint. That little round circle is the midpoint. And I also know that this whole thing's 20 inches across. And so my midpoint should be at 10 inches. So I'm just going to drag over here and snap to 10 inches. Now I want this wall to be 8 inches thick and I want it to be centered. So I'm actually I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hover on this line. I'm going to drag it this way. And I'm not even going to click again. I'm just going to type in the number 4 and the quotes for inches and hit enter. So you can see down in the bottom right corner I've typed in 4 and now I'm going to hit enter and it is basically pulling me this little reference line right there. And I'm going to do the same thing so from the center I'm going to go this direction and I'm going to go 4 inches enter and it's just putting a nice reference right there for me. Now if you do this next step and things look wonky or don't work out then then you may not have drawn these things on this top plane but just to double check to make sure we drew them right on the top surface of our footing I'm just gonna orbit a little bit and look and see and go oh did I actually get those three lines right on the top edge of that yes I did so that's right where I need it so now now that I've got that uh, oh, if you have a wheel on your mouse, if you roll it forward, it'll zoom in. If you roll it backward, it will zoom out. So I often use my orbit tool like this, and then I use the wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. So I'm just kind of getting this situated because I'm going to draw a square that goes from this corner over to this corner. So I want to be able to see the whole thing. I'm going to go up to my shapes tool. I'm going to click on the square, and I'm going to come down, and I'm just going to move in until... I can see I get that X that's right on the intersection there where I want to start. And I'm going to click, I'm going to left click and hold. I'm going to drag all the way up to the top corner and I'm going to let go of my mouse. Now I have this square that's right on those reference points. And I've drawn it on layer zero. In fact, I'm going to make, now that I've drawn that, I'm going to make the footing disappear. And you'll see that I have that nice square. Now I'm going to leave the footing there for a bit just because I like that's how I normally draw but uh, you'll notice that um, if I had not grouped my footing then it would think that I was trying to draw that square on the footing and it will it messes things up pretty bad so these are separate pieces even though they're touching each other now I'm going to grab my push pull tool and I want to I'm going to hover over this and I basically want to pull that up and I want to pull it up eight feet because if the guys showed up and built a foundation, well, they would pour that footing and then they would set. They have eight foot tall uh, foundation forms that they would set on top of that. Um, so I'm just going to click and drag that up. And I'm just going to drag it up to whatever. You'll notice down in the bottom right, it says I've dragged it up to five foot 11 16 But before I click on anything else, I'm just going to type in eight foot and enter and it will just make my wall go up to eight feet now I haven't really used this yet but the pan tool is right next to the orbit tool that's the hand and if you just put it anywhere and click and hold and drag it just lets you pan around so uh, now that I've got my I've got like this three-dimensional shape I want to turn it into a group and so if I grab this arrow and if I if I start dragging and put a box around all this you'll notice that it it has selected everything on this wall but it also selected my footing and I don't really want that so I'm gonna click out here and unselect now if I can sometimes I will try to select to where I'll leave a corner of this out and if I know that this has already been grouped and I can leave a corner of it out or if I can leave a bit of it out then it won't select it so I'll actually come down here and I'm going to click about right there and start dragging. That way I catch the bottom corner of this. I drag up here, but I've left the bottom corner of the footing out, so it should 
it should have, it did. It left that out and it's only selected the wall. Now I'm going to right click and again I've got to be on top of the thing that I'm trying to make a group but I'm going to make this into a group by right clicking selecting make group and now it has made that thing into a group. And I'm going to change the I'm going to paint it, so I'm going to go to my materials, and I like the the, the uh, concrete aggregate smoke for the wall as well. So I'm just going to select that, so it turns into a paint bucket, and I'm going to just hover over this thing that I I made it a group. If you haven't made it a group and you click on it, then it will only paint the one surface that you're touching. But since I grouped the whole thing and I click, it's going to paint all six surfaces. It thinks that that whole thing is what I wanted to paint, which is what I wanted. Now, the other thing I like to do after I've done this is I like I grab my eraser and I like to erase those reference lines. So I'm just I'm clicking and I'm dragging across those lines. If I had done that over here, it would have erased other things. So I out here in this empty space, I just clicked and dragged and, and deleted those lines. And then the next thing I like to do is I want to move this to its own layer. So I'm selecting it and you'll see that it's on layer 0. I'm going to go up to my layers, I'm going to add a new layer, and I'm going to call this Foundation. So I now have a layer named Foundation, and so when I click this drop down, I should have that option. Sure enough, I'm going to click on Foundation, and now it has moved that to the Foundation. And again, to test it, I, I you know make it visible or invis invisible, so if that one disappears. Footing disappears, reappears. So you can toggle that stuff on and off. Now, uh, the next thing that I did, because I basically I was drawing a, I need a basement wall area, so I was drawing a few things here. So the next thing I did was, I thought, well, I want my f my basement floor. And when they're building, they basically they build, they pour the footing, they pour the foundation, and then they come in and they pour the basement floor. And the basement floor is actually going to sit right on this on the top of this footing so what I want to do is I want to draw a box and I want to pull it push it whatever to turn it into a floor so I'm going to uh, I think on this one I'm gonna take my measuring tape tool again I'm still on the active layer 0 that's the one that's active if I wanted to change that you just click on this so now if I start drawing it'll think that I'm drawing on the foundation layer but I like to just stay on layer zero. So I'm going to grab my tape measure. This floor is going to be four inches thick. So I'm just going to go down here, right on that line, and I'm going to click and drag up and let go. And then I'm going to type in four inches and hit enter. Now if I draw a box there from this corner all the way out to this corner, then I can drag that and turn it into the floor. Now, what I like to do is I'm going to make these other two layers disappear really quickly, and I'm I actually this is how I normally do this. I'll I'll draw that one box, the first thing. I'll select it and I'll make it into a group. So now this is a group, even though it's just like a a single plane. You know, it's just a two-dimensional box basically. I like to turn it into a group. I'm going to um, make a new layer that is basement floor and I'm gonna move it to the basement floor layer and then what I like to do is I come down here with my my pointer tool and I right click and I'm going to edit that group so now you can see it kind of is trying to show you that I'm working just on this now I'm gonna push and pull that I can uh, make the footing and the foundation reappear but I'm editing this this one thing so I'm just gonna pull this floor out and I don't need a whole floor but I probably want about eight feet so I'm just gonna go eight foot and hit enter and then I'm gonna go back to my pointer tool and basically I've got a once I'm done editing that I need to get outside of this this dotted box so if I just come out here somewhere and click then it kind of backs me out of that and then I'm gonna pan around or you know you can hit zoom extents and it'll kinda of zoom out um, and get out of that the other thing I want to do is I want to erase this line now that I'm done with it and then I want to turn that basement floor into some concrete so I'm gonna it's a group 
I edited the group. In fact, I'm going to click on it, and you'll see, you know, because I was editing that group, it just got bigger, and the whole thing's all selected. Uh, I'm going to unselect it. I'm going to come out here, and let's try that polished concrete old for our basement floor. So I'm just going to click that, and now I've painted my basement floor to look like concrete. I have a foundation wall, and we've got this nice uh, building assembly so far. Okay, the next thing we want to do is let's draw a floor assembly on top of it. So uh, I used to frame houses, so this floor assembly is something I uh, have done a bunch of times. It may look differently on some of the older homes that we're building. But for the purposes of what we're doing for the book and things, um, it's really not that big a deal um, if we try to make it look a lot like the old stuff that we're working on or if we make it look like a newer building I'm just gonna make it look like if I was gonna build a house today this is how I would build it so I'm, I need to lay a mud seal or basically a, a piece of treated lumber right on here and typically there's gonna be uh, some concrete or some foundation bolts sticking up out of here that's not important to be in our picture so I'm not gonna draw that because uh, you wouldn't see that but um, but I'm, I am going to lay the, uh, the piece of lumber here on top. And that typically is going to be built out of a piece of 2x4 or 2x6, depending on the wall thickness above. I'm going to draw this as a 2x4. Now, the other when I'm building a new house, I also like to leave uh, room for the exterior sheathing. So typically, I come in off of this outside edge a half an inch. So 0.5 and hit enter. And, I, and then I come over, the lumber is 3.5 inches 6, so 3.5, and hit enter. Now, since I selected inches and feet when I set this up, um, by default, if I don't type in inches or I don't type in feet, it's going to think I'm talking about inches. Um, so you'll notice I just typed in 3.5, and it figured I was talking about inches. So... I'm gonna now I've got this. This is this is where my board's gonna lay, and so I'm just gonna draw a box. And I'm gonna start back here at this top corner. You can see it's snapping to the intersection between this dotted line and that line that's there. And I'm gonna click and I'm gonna come over here and I accidentally let go of my click that time. So on this end I'm gonna click again and that will make my my uh, board. Now I don't necessarily have to make this stuff disappear every single time in order to keep it out of my group. What I can do is, uh, since as, as long as I don't select this whole thing, well, actually, let me back up and I'll show you this. So if I if if I grab my selection tool, and if I if I go from the bottom left corner up to the top right then it will only select things that are entirely inside the box. So like this, if I click down here and drag up, well, since this thing is a larger group and it was outside the box, it's not going to select it. It's only going to select that. But if you drag from the right, the top right down, then anything that is touched by the box will be selected. So now it selected those dotted lines, it selected that because it was inside the box, but it also selected that entire wall because just part of it was inside the box. So that can be helpful depending on what you're doing. I tend to drag up, so so instead of making the wall disappear, I'm just, I just zoomed out so I can grab that entire box, but I also will know that I'll leave a portion of this wall out because I don't want to select it. So I've just selected that new uh, box which is going to be our wood or our mud sill I'm going to right click it and group it I'm going to add a layer called sill and I'm going to move it to sill and then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to edit that group I'm going to use my push pull tool to push it up 1.5 enter for one and a half inches and then I'm going to paint that a wood color so down here I've got some wood options and I want it to kinda of look like some treated wood so we'll try this wood veneer now if I I'm, I'm editing this group so if I click on here 
it just painted that top layer and I don't want that so I'm gonna hit control Z to undo I'm gonna grab my select tool and unselect that I gotta get out here somewhere and click now if I select that I have that group right so I know now if I grab my paint bucket and just pour some paint on there now it'll paint the whole thing and then I'm gonna delete those two lines and I'll orbit around and see how things look I'm liking that so now we have we've got our uh, mud sill and we put it on its own layer now the next thing is we need a rim board so and this one we could draw the exact same way we can just draw you know draw a thing and drag it up I'm gonna try and draw it um, I'm gonna try and draw it on the uh, vertical plane just so you can see what that might look like so I'm gonna zoom around here what I need in order to draw on the vertical plane it's kind of weird so I, I'm gonna draw a box but it's gonna follow that blue line right so if I come over here and I start drawing and I drag this way to the midpoint and then I just start dra pulling up it it knows just just simply because I hovered here for a couple of seconds it knows that that's kinda where I want that corner to stay and then I just start dragging up and then I'm just gonna click and make a box now look at my dimensions this says it's eight and a half by inch and three eight and an eighth by inch and three quarter and that's not what I want it to be uh, this this would be if this was a home that was built in the uh, late well, let's say it was built in the 70s so they probably used a 2 by 10 well a 2 by 10 is 9 and 1 quarters of an inch by 1 and a half inches so I'm going to make this 9 and a quarter inches tall and 1 and a half inches thick so 9.25 comma 1.5 enter so that just adjusted it to 9 and a half by one and a half now just like we've done before we're going to group this so I'm gonna come down here and I, I want to leave some of this out so it's not inside my box if I draw a box here it should leave it out because it's you know part of its hanging clear over there and so I select that I right click it I group it I go over here and make a layer and this is my rim and actually I'm gonna rename that to the floor and I'm gonna just I'm gonna double click on it and we'll just call this floor I'll probably put my rim and my joists on the same thing so call that floor and this is still selected so it says it's on layer 0 but I'm gonna move it to the floor layer and then I'm gonna hover around here because I need to drag it this way so I'm gonna hover around to this edge like that I'm going to grab my select tool, select it, right click, and I'm going to edit the group. I'm going to use my push pull tool. I'm going to pull it this way and let go. And I want it to go 20 feet. So just type in 20 and foot and hit enter. And it will drag it all the way out to the end of my wall. Then I'm going to deselect it so that I can paint it. And I'm going to go pick a wood material color that looks like a 2x4 and that plywood with knots looks pretty good so I'm gonna hover over that paint it and now I have a board that looks like a 2 by 10 now I also want to make sure that some of these things have a nice contrast between them like the concrete even this floor has a little bit of a contrast between it so hopefully that that stuff will kind of show up depending on what images we're trying to to take um, but uh, I'm definitely doing my boards in a nice high contrast so that I can see that's my sill or my rim board that's my rim board that's my mud sill um, hopefully that stuff will show up pretty good now the next thing I need to draw some floor joists in here and floor joists are really really easy uh, all we gotta do is draw one and then we can duplicate them so uh, we'll do the same thing we did to draw this mud seal. I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna draw one right here on this corner. So, grab this tool, and I'm just gonna click on the bottom corner. I'm gonna drag up to the top corner, and I'm gonna let go. My dimensions 
it snapped to that nine and a quarter because that's the height of the rim board but it looks like I drew it two and three eighths inches wide so I'm going to change that to one and a half inches wide by nine and a quarter so I'm going to type in 1.5 comma 9.25 enter so now I have that uh, box and you can see it's it's sitting on the same surface so it's kind of giving you that the bo this thing's white but that thing that it's sitting on is is wood colored so you're getting this this image but again if we wanted to we could make the um, the floor layer disappear and you'll see it we just have a white box there right but I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave the floor layer there and again I'm just gonna select so that I'm only selecting that box right click it and make it a group um, I'm going to move this box to the floor layer but I'm not ready to do that yet I don't want it to get confused with any I don't want it to get stuck to that or anything like that it it shouldn't cause any problems if I did believe move it right now but I'm not going to first I'm gonna edit it so I'm gonna right click again I'm gonna edit that group and I'm gonna use my push pull tool and I'm gonna drag this thing out now, if you'll remember, we made about eight feet of concrete floor. I think I'm gonna make this about eight feet of wood floor. So I'm just pulling this out, I'm gonna let it go, and let's just say eight feet. It doesn't really matter exactly how long it is. This, Since this is offset a little bit from where our concrete floor is, it's not gonna stick out quite as far, but, but, I, but I now have this board that is Eight feet long and it's sticking straight out there right I'm gonna deselect it so that I can paint it and I'm gonna paint it the same color as the rim board because it's another it's a 2 by 10 right so these things should look the same in the real world now how do we well now is probably a good time I'm gonna move this to the floor layer so I'm gonna switch from layer 0 to floor and sure enough, if I make the floor disappear, the whole thing disappears. Okay, so now we need to copy this or duplicate it. And so what we're going to do, in order to copy anything, you have to move, you use this thing called move, the move tool. And you can see it says move, stretch, copy, and array selected entities. So we're actually going to array them. We're going to duplicate them in a line. So what we do is we grab our, actually I like to start with the select tool. I'm going to select that and then I grab the move tool and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to snap to a specific corner of the, the board that I'm want, wanting to move. So I'm going to snap to this outside corner and I'm going to click and let go. And then if you start to move the mouse, you'll see that you are moving that board. Now we want a copy of this board and in order to make a copy of the board all you gotta do while you're moving it so I've clicked but I haven't and I'm moving it around while I'm doing that I'm gonna hit control on my keyboard and it now it realizes oh I'm making a copy of this and then you'll see that that red inference line is showing up and I'm moving it right along that that plane so I'm gonna push it out there a little ways and it looks like if you look at your dimensions we've gone two foot uh, half inch but we really only want we want these to be 16 inches on center and so I'm just gonna move this board 16 inches so I'm gonna type in 1 6 and hit enter and it put it back to right on 16 inches now before you click before you type before you do anything else the very next thing you gotta do to make an array is you have to type the X so I'm gonna type X and look down at your distance or at your dimensions and and see what it does so I'm gonna type X and I'm gonna put a space bar and whoops that's wrong well no that is not wrong so I typed X and a space bar and then I'm gonna type I want to make let's make 15 copies of this so I'm gonna type 15 and hit enter no I wasn't supposed to hit the space bar so let's try that again this one does get a little tricky. So I'm going to hit undo, control Z, and we'll start over. So I'm going to select this board. I'm going to snap to this corner here and click and move it. And while I'm moving it, I'm going to hit control. 
and then I'm going to go 16 and enter for the that's how I want 16 inches and then I'm going to go X and I'm going to go 1 5 so that means I want to do that 15 times so X 1 5 and hit enter and you'll see that it made 15 copies of that board so obviously putting a spacebar in there will mess it up and then you also notice that when you come down to this end um, I 15 was the exact right number to do you know to cover the 20 feet 20 foot length of that but this one's hanging off the end so all we gotta do is just move that one back so what I'm gonna do is select it I'm going to grab my move tool and then I just want to pick a corner. It's like, well, which corner should I pick? If I pick this corner, then I don't know how far to move it. If I pick this corner and start moving it, then it will snap to the corner on the rim board. So that's why I'm going to I'm going to select this corner and I'm going to snap it to that corner. So now we have a nice flooring assembly going on here, right? And then we probably need some floor sheeting. So I, uh, I'll i draw that next. So this is these are all, each one of these is in an individual group. But all of these grouped materials are all on the floor layer. So if I make that disappear, the whole floor disappears. So now I'm going to draw some floor sheathing, and all I got to do is draw a box. So I'm going to start at this corner right down here on the top edge of that board. I'm just going to click and drag out to that far corner and draw a box. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because if I, if now if I want to group that box, I'm going to start down here so that I leave part of this out, and I'll leave part of this out. So it shouldn't select those two, but if I'm drawing a box big enough. I have all those other floor joists in there and you'll see that not only did it select that that uh, box that I drew but it also selected every one of those other floor joists except for the, the one that I'd left out so that's not what I want I don't want all that in one group so I'm gonna grab my select tool and click out here to deselect so what can I do well let's turn the floor off so the floor has gone now I could probably select that box a little easier. And if I can't get all this other stuff out, then I just dis make it disappear. So turn off my sill, turn off my foundation. Now I can easily grab just that box and right click it and group it and right click it again and edit it and use my push pull tool and drag it up. And we're, our flooring's three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm going to go 0 0.75 and hit enter. So and then let's make it, I'm going to deselect it so I can paint it and let's turn it into some OSB. So I painted it with the OSB color. Now we have a nice piece of floor sheathing there. And now let's make the foundation reappear and the sill reappear and the floor reappear. And now this looks good. There's one thing we forgot to do though is we haven't moved this floor sheathing to its own layer. It's still on layer zero, right? So if I select it, the entity info says layer zero. I want to create a floor sheathing layer and I'm going to move that to that layer and now we're all set up. So now if I needed to make that disappear, that works, right? Okay, so we've got this nice assembly going on. Uh, if we wanted to, we could draw like our exterior sheathing as well. We can, and you can draw like we could frame in a wall, or we could just draw in a wall that's covered with drywall. Whatever we want to do. All I'm going to do for this is I'm going to draw this just the sheathing. Like basically, if I sheeted the outside of this wall, there'd probably be like a half an inch of OSB on it. Uh, and then on the outside layer. I might put you know some siding or something so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take I'm gonna draw a box right across this whole band joist or this whole rim joist assembly and then I'll stretch it to what I want and then we'll paint it to look like siding so I'm gonna start maybe I'll start right down here 
So I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse, and I click on that corner. Now I'm going to scroll back so that I can go to this other corner. And then if I move my pencil over here and then zoom in here, you'll notice that it allows you to kind of float around just by using the wheel on your mouse. So I just drew a, a box across that whole assembly, right? And I'm going to just I'm going to try to just select that box. So I'm actually going to orbit right up here. It's kind of strange what I'm doing, but I'm going to orbit right up here and then I'm going to use my select tool and I'm going to come in right here to where if I select and drag no, oh, that won't quite get it because it goes all the way to the bottom down here, doesn't it? Let's try that again. I'm going to come right down here, and I'm going to select and drag up and let go. Now, if if I'm thinking right, I didn't I didn't get any of these other groups entirely in my box. The only thing that I got entirely in my box, sure enough, was that one plane. I left part of that mud sail out. I left part of this rim board out, and then all these other larger things were definitely out of there. So basically I just orbited around to where I could quickly select just that one plane and, and then I'm going to switch to my select tool and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make that a group. Oh, it's telling me I've selected more and you can see the blue line. I'm not sure what I did there, but let's try that again. So I'll orbit back over here. I will select just that box, I hope and go to my select tool and oh right click here and I must have more than just that one thing selected that's not quite working the way I wanted to yeah it's it's grabbing you can see the blue line there it's grabbing that rim board as well so I better make some things disappear so I'm gonna get rid of the floor sheeting I'll get rid of my sill and my floor and just leave that box where I can easily grab it. So let's grab the just that box. I'm going to kind of hover over on it, right click it, make it a group. Now I'll orbit around a little bit. And I'm going to right click and edit that group. I'm going to pull this out. Now if this was just half inch OSB it would come out to there. I'm going to pull it out an inch so one enter and this will be basically our, our OSB plus some siding so I pulled it out but I also want to pull it up now this is my rim board right here but if I built a wall on top of it that would go up another eight feet so I'm just gonna orbit a little bit so I can get on the top there I'm gonna use my push pull tool and I'm gonna pull that top edge right there I gotta hover over to where the top edge gets activated I'm gonna pull up and let go and then I'm going to type in 8 feet and enter so basically now it was 10 or 9 and a quarter inches tall plus the floor sheeting so probably 10 inches tall and I just pulled it up another 8 so if I grab my measuring tape that should be 8 foot 10 right yeah 8 foot 11 and a half oh I got the mud seal in there too so that's that's the height that that would be and that that is what I wanted to, to do now uh, let's just for fun, let's just paint this the way it would look. So, um, so I'm gonna unselect it, and I'm gonna grab the OSB paint bucket, and I'm gonna paint the whole thing with OSB. Now, I'm going to reselect it, and I'm gonna hit Edit Group, and I'm gonna just paint this one surface to make it look like siding. So, if we go down here to Brick Cladding and Siding and we pick our white siding and I come over here while this is all selected so now it knows I'm just trying to editing edit this one let one surface I'm gonna click on that and you can see that it turned it into siding but it left the rest of it looking like OSB now the one thing I don't like about this let me click off of it I don't like there's not a huge contrast there between the concrete and the siding so depending on what I was doing if I was gonna take a picture of that or something I may want to change that siding into a different color. Uh, maybe I'd go in here, edit the group, and let's do the brown siding instead. Maybe we'll leave it like that for now. And that's an, that's a better contrast for our pictures and stuff. So anyway, so now I have a wall, 
I'm gonna make my floor sheathing and my floor reappear. And this wall really wasn't all that important, just kind of fun to draw. Uh, really, if, if we're trying to draw a window and some caulking, then I basically need to punch a hole in this foundation and I need to put a window in it and then we need to figure out how to caulk it, right? Um, oh, one thing I haven't done up to this point is I haven't saved this. So I'm gonna click on File and I'm gonna hit Save. And I'm just gonna save this in my SketchUp folder and we'll just call this basement assembly maybe whatever you want to call it just so that I haven't forgotten to save it uh, it looks like I haven't got my my seal turned on either so there's that um, okay so let's work on our foundation. So we need to punch a hole in our foundation so that we can put a window in it. So let's say we're gonna put a window in it that's four feet wide and three feet high. Uh, typically, I'm gonna make the floor and stuff disappear so we can just focus on the, oh, and I forgot to, I need to move, I need to make a layer for my exterior sheathing, right? So let's add a layer and go exterior sheathing. We can just call it siding. Whoops. Layer one, I'm gonna double click on it and just type in siding. And then I'm gonna move it to that siding layer and now just to test it, sure enough, it'll disappear. So I'm gonna make the siding disappear. I'm gonna make the floor sheathing disappear make my mud seal disappear, but we'll leave everything else. Okay, I'm gonna scroll out to the outside of this and if, if when they poured this foundation, if they would have put a window in it, then they need a decent chunk of concrete up top uh, for the structure of the house. Typically, it's about a foot, depending on what's going on. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna orbit around so I know I'm clicking on the right corner and I'm just gonna measure from this corner down and let go and I'm gonna type in 12 for inches and so now I have a reference line at 12 inches and then I'm gonna come over here off of and really I just want a reference line anywhere out here it doesn't matter I'll, I'll probably pull it out here a couple of feet but what I'm doing is I'm actually grabbing from a corner if I pull from this corner and go this way then it knows I want a reference line that's parallel with the line that I just selected so I'm gonna click and drag and you can see it's just making I selected off this line so it's making a nice parallel line and you can see it's also dragging right along this surface because it thinks that's the direction I'm headed if I went this other way then it goes green because it thinks I'm going across that surface right and then if I get away from that then I could get it floating anywhere out there in space but I want it to be right on this surface so I'm gonna drag it this way and I'm going to drop it and let's just move it out there five feet and then from that line I'm gonna so I want a window that is four feet wide so I'm gonna click on this reference line and drag it and let go and go 48 and enter for 48 inches and then I want to come from the top down this is going to be three feet or 36 inches so I'm gonna drag that down and hit 36 enter and so now we have a a box there now I have been drawing on layer zero. I put these reference lines on layer zero, but we want to edit not layer zero. We actually want to edit the foundation wall. So I'm gonna click on, now that I have these reference lines there, I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit edit group. And uh, this is where it gets tricky. I prob like I like to have drawn these reference lines beforehand because it makes it easier to erase them but depending on what color our box is they may not be visible enough for us to do anything with because the goal was that we now use these reference lines to draw our window and because our concrete is the same color as our reference lines it's hard to see them I'm hovering around you can see that it's actually snapping to an intersection 
and it's actually those reference lines. So I'm just going to I'm going to give it a try. We're going to click here and drag and then it should be down here somewhere. And sure enough, it is snapping down there to It's snapping there and it's snapping there. All right. I think we got I think we got our box where we wanted it. And uh, now I'm going to use the push pull tool to so we've drawn a box on this outside surface of our foundation wall I'm gonna use the push pull tool and this one's kind of tricky because I'm gonna I'm gonna click and hold and then I'm going to push in on the wall now if I pull the other direction you'll see it'll come out so it kind of depends on where you are orbited to on your drawing but you'll have to move your mouse a little bit and see if it's trying to pull or push but you want to move your mouse so it pushes and you'll keep pushing until it will snap and it says on the face and right where it says on face now I'm going to let go and what it's doing is it's gone to that interior face of the foundation wall and it's snapped to it and when I let go it basically knew that you were trying to cut a hole in that so I just pushed it in till it hit the other face and then I let go and it drew that for us. Now I'm going to deselect it. Huh? Yeah, she's on a run. She'll be back in a bit, buddy. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, now that I've unselected this, you can see that I did not snap to my guidelines the way I had planned to. It looks like I got my bottom edge, but it looks like I made my window wider than I wanted to. That's okay, we can easily edit it. I'm gonna select the wall, right click it, and hit edit group, and then I'm gonna just pull this one edge. So I'm just gonna grab my push-pull tool, I'm gonna to hover over this edge, and I'm gonna pull it out to where it snaps to that line, and let go, and then I'm gonna click and unselect, and now I can see that I've, I've got a box that lines up with these reference points. I'm gonna delete my reference lines now because I'm done with them. And now we have our window opening. Now if we really want, depending on the foundation, uh, sometimes there'll be an indent in the foundation where the window is supposed to sit. Sometimes there won't be. Sometimes they will have slapped the window right up against just this square opening. But for our drawing, let's go ahead and draw. Or let's go ahead and give ourselves an edge to kind of mount the window to in the, in the concrete. So what I'm going to do is, again, we're going to continue to just edit that foundation by selecting the foundation, right-clicking, hitting Edit Group, and we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a line, probably just in the center. So I'm going to grab my pencil and just draw a line. And I'm going to hover over right here, and you can see how it snaps to the midpoint. I'm just going to hover to there and I'm going to click and drag down and snap to the other midpoint and let go. And then I'm going to use my push pull tool and I'm going to just pull that out one inch. So I pull it out a ways, I type in one and hit enter and it just pulled it out to one inch. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So I'm going to kind of orbit a little bit and maybe pan a little bit and orbit a little bit to where I can see this other edge here. I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint over to there and I'm going to pull that surface up and hit one inch and enter. Now you'll notice that it's drawn this little extra line there and it's okay if you want you can I'm going to zoom in and use my eraser and just delete that line because really that would have been poured in concrete it wouldn't really be a line there. And then I'm going to orbit a little bit and you'll notice if you orbit here on this surface then the program knows you're trying to orbit around this wall if I try orbiting out here then it orbits off of that ground out there so you'll you'll I think you'll slowly get a feel for where you need to position your tool when you're trying to orbit so that it will help you orbit or pivot around whatever you're really trying to pivot around so I'm just turning the wall a little bit now so I can draw a line here and I'm going to draw that line from there up to the midpoint and I'll pull this out one inch and hit enter zoom in 
delete that little corner there and then I gotta pan up a little bit and maybe orbit around a little bit so that I can draw a line from here to there now you'll notice that the second I drew that line what's happening is that I now have a line that goes all the way around and it thinks that I want that surface to be closed off but it's no big deal we haven't broken anything all you do is you hit the select tool and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select that surface now notice that if I didn't select this line if I select this line then it highlights that line and if I hit delete or if I hit erase then it will erase that line but I'm not trying to erase that line I want all those lines there I just want to erase this surface so I'm gonna select that surface and then I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard it's the same as using your eraser so you'll see I kept all of my lines that made up that edge including the one that I just drew I just deleted that surface that it it just by default put it in there because it knows it's not sure if you want it or not it will put it in there and then you can delete it out if you don't want it and then I'm gonna use my push pull tool and I'm gonna pull this surface down one inch I'm gonna grab my little eraser tool and I'm just gonna rub across there and there and now I have this lip to kinda of mount my window to now my outside box this was this was four feet across and three feet down now that we've pulled this in it actually makes for a smaller window but that's okay we're just gonna find a window that will fit in there and, and make it uh, make it fit but um, and then so we've been editing that foundation this whole time so I'm gonna come out here I'm gonna click uh, off of that and I'm gonna make all of our other materials appear and let's just orbit around it and see what we've got this is looking pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and hit the save button here to save our drawing and now we have a building assembly that we can come in here and we can draw different things and make different scenes depending on what we're trying to do and we'll be able to use this for a number of different uh, pictures I'll stop here. In the next video, we will put a window in here.